We live, baby. You crack me up. <laughs> the DOS effects. Oh, ew. all right. All right, we live. Let's go. Out. Let's get this. Let's get this going. Let's get it in. Let's get it popping. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for all y'all in podcast land, thank you for tuning in on another episode of Just Guys Podcast. And uh, for those of you who might be or about to log in and follow us on Facebook Live, uh, welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, we're about to dive into another episode. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, tonight, tomorrow night, last night tomorrow afternoon and all that great stuff and all that good jazz. Uh, as always, uh, we got our, you know, one half of the podcast, Miss Molly. Hello, everyone. All right, right I- on, right on. And then you know who I'd be, you know what I'm saying, Rashad, aka Bruce and Leroy, because I got that glow. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So let's get this popping, let's get it started. What we... What are we jumping into tonight? We are jumping into unequal opportunity for children and the Crown Act. That Crown so, Act? Yes. So I'm sure that a lot of people have been watching my stories the past couple of weeks when I came out publicly and said that my son was assaulted at school. So um, I just wanted to come back on because I felt as though that talking to other parents uh we are going through similar issues doesn't matter about the race um that our kids are being set up to not have equal opportunity to receive a a proper education so um in a nutshell of course my son was assaulted and you know i received advice to state hey you need to go to the board meeting and uh, voice your concerns. So that's what I did last week. And um, when I walked in, and and this ties into the Crown Act as well, because I don't think that I've been discriminated against in the past regarding my hair or my looks Mm -hmm. as much as I have recently. And um, I think that when people generally see a race, really, I would say for us, um, when they see this red hair or braids, they're thinking in their minds, oh, they're ghetto. They don't know how to speak. They're not educated. Um, And that's what I picked up last week. Mm. I picked up a a lot of side eyeing. I guess because of my red hair or the sneakers that I was wearing. Um, I picked up a lot of statements, side statements that were said by professionals, supposed to be professionals. And I said to myself, wow, these are people educating our kids. And if we don't have opportunities to speak up for our kids, then who's going to speak up for them on their behalf Mm -hmm. to receive that proper education? So um, in a nutshell, I feel like that our kids stumble through the process of receiving opportunities along the way, K through 12. So if you look at the gifted programs in our schools, for instance, the school district that my son goes to um, and that my, my girls have went to as well, I started noticing the different unequal opportunities, for instance, the National Junior Honor Society. When my daughter, my oldest daughter came through, I would say it was about maybe four or five Black people on the Honor Society Mm. out of like, I would say a hundred. So that was a red flag to me because I'm just like, where's like, why isn't it balanced? Because I know there are some smart kids here. So why weren't they selected to be in a junior honor society? Or Mm -hmm. why weren't they selected to be into the honor society? So that that makes me think about how things are put into place, like the gifted programs, Odyssey of the Mind. You don't see a lot of us in these programs. Mm -hmm. And 
I say, why is that? I, I question that now. Why is that? Do, do they not want a diverse group or do they just want a particular group to or race to be the face for a school district? Mm. So um, I, I just think that different things along that line. And then um, as far as sports are concerned, you get into the different politics of who's related to who who can get on the team faster if they if their parents are friends with the coaches or who's getting the awards i noticed that with my middle daughter when she played in the middle school you know it wasn't that the kids were any on her level at all couldn't even dribble a basketball mm. and you know you're talking about the team winning based on solely one person and just because the politics of the school system that we have is just like, you know, you, you have to kiss someone's behind if, if you're that race. Like, you have to buddy up to them to get recognition around here. And we talked about that um, on the other podcast with Jay. So there are different things that are unequal, but for this recent issue within the school district I just was alarmed when I heard the statements last week and I thought initially when when the statements were being made by professionals I was saying to myself I I was in culture shock because it's just like we send our kids to these people Mm -hmm. and and when I'm listening to them they shouldn't even be around our kids because they first of all you're seeing smart comments that are unprofessional Mm -hmm. and you're you're discriminating against me you don't even know me you don't even know if I'm educated or not you're just discriminating against me by the way that I look because I have these braids and red hair in my head Mm -hmm. so you're thinking okay she's ghetto she's loud she's this she's that and you know it's it's a lot it was a really alarming to me and I guess it shouldn't be a shock, but it was for me because I I just wasn't expecting that. I was expecting a more cleaner environment or climate is what I should say. Okay. Um, it, it just wasn't that at all. It was, it, it was everything that I should have expected, meaning no accountability, you know, a group of people looking at me like I have five heads on my shoulders Hmm. and not not even listening to what I'm saying because you already have it in your mind that I am a a black mother that is being overbearing or she's speaking up too much. I even had someone say to me after the meeting, "Why did you even go?" What do you mean? And, and this is someone in the education system, and they asked me. Miss Scott, why did you even go to the to the board meeting? But I thought the board meetings were always for to bring up issues. I didn't know that you shouldn't go. I was told you should go. What was what's the point of the board meeting then? I, I I think some of us have it in our minds that we should not speak up. We should we should go another route. We shouldn't be making a big loud noise about issues. And I feel like for me, that is a huge issue for us as parents, because some of us are not even willing to go to the board meetings. I received so many emails and and inboxes, uh, inbox messages from other parents, but they're scared to go to the board meetings. They're scared to even talk to the administration. Mm. So it, it could very well be that it's for your job purposes. It may be that you're overwhelmed with talking to people, but I think that we are all human. And if something is going on with our kids, they should be treated equal. It doesn't matter about the race or um, sexual preference, meaning that if you're black and if something happens to you, or if you're white and something happens to you, you shouldn't fear retaliation. And that's another Mm -hmm. thing I wanted to talk about too, um, one of the mothers had reached out to me and said her son was retaliated against 
because she was making such a big issue of what happened to mm. her son. And, you know, what, what are we supposed to do? Are we not supposed to say anything when things happen to our kids? No, nah, you're supposed to speak up. So. I no. think you would speak up. I think that, was, that would be like, uh, like, first and foremost, is to speak up and say, look, this is what's going on, and I don't like it, and it needs to change, or it needs to fix, or I need an understanding of why it's happening. And yeah. then we can come to a resolution on come and fixing it. Mm-hmm. Like that's what I think, and I think that's what I would figure. That's what the board going to the board meeting would be like. This is the issues that I can, that's going on in in the school that you are the board of. Like you all, I'm coming to tell you my concerns. Whether it is the curriculum, uh, mm-hmm. the policies, the safety, like. What is your uh, what? What are you for? If if this is not the forum to bring these issues and these concerns up, then tell me yeah. what the what is what is the forum? If this is not it, what is the point of having these this board of education meeting if you're not going to be receptive to be receptive to what we're saying to you? Like, I'm not a person that makes a big deal out of things. I generally, like I said before on this podcast, I generally stay in my shell, stay in my box. But I feel like now through this experience and dealing with the people that I have dealt with, um, I feel like someone has to be the spokesperson for parents like me mm-hmm. when we go through what we go through. Mm-hmm to support our kids properly because it can be overwhelming for us especially if we work Mm -hmm. um you know but you have to speak up for your kids if you don't do it like it it sets them up for failure and i keep hearing uh we don't want this pipeline to go into the um the prison system for the kids we want to set it up where you had this first time um, offenders program and we don't want it to be a pipeline to the prison system and I said this before if you keep allowing kids to get away with crimes they're going to end up in two places a casket or prison either mm-hmm. or it's it's no way around it because you're allowing them to get away with different things mm-hmm. it starts with this whole bullying situation you know people are saying the kids don't know how to adapt to being in a pandemic Mm. and they don't know how to function when they go to school but I don't necessarily agree totally with that I don't think we can blame it on the pandemic totally I think it starts at home with the parents like disciplining them and you know if they're outspoken you have to put them in place you have to put them back in line that's how we grew up and you know we weren't in a place where we would go to school and act up or fight or whatever. Like I didn't go through that. I don't like, I don't know where this mess comes from, but little girls I see now, they're more of the bullies than anybody. And it's just like, what is going on? Mm. (laughs) So, you know, it, it gets to the point where what is going to be done about it. And of course our educators are overwhelmed and they're underpaid but at the same time who's going to speak up for the kids to say everybody should have an option to receive an education just like what we came through it doesn't matter about the race everybody should be able to go to school and receive a proper education without being discriminated against being Mm -hmm. uh not given opportunities to be in a gifted program, to be an Odyssey of the Mind or Honor Society or BPA or uh, what's the other one? Like a foreign language. We're going through that now. Like when we went to school, we had to go through a foreign language mm-hmm. in middle school. I, I want to say it was what? About five of them in foreign language that we had to take. Really? I, I want to say it was, yeah. At Lake Forest, yeah, we had to go through that in middle school. Nah, mm-hmm. I would. Uh, I know in high school we had to take. Uh, I think we had to take one course of uh, foreign language. Really? Yeah, I remember taking French. Okay. It was like French and Spanish, 
uh, I don't remember what the other uh, mm-hmm. classes were, but I remember French and Spanish were like a couple of uh, options that you had to take. Yes. But now, you know, it's not an option for at my son's school. Like you have to be selective for that. Like, I, I think of the language course? Yeah, in middle school. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. it, it's not it's not a requirement. And I feel like it should be a requirement for middle schoolers, especially Spanish, because we don't generally speak French. Mm-hmm. I took French in, in high school, but I didn't take Spanish. I, I really don't know anything about Spanish. But had I taken Spanish, I could have got paid more money at work because we work on projects that, that are out of our country. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about writing and, you know, writing uh, deals and agreements and all that different things, specifications, documentation, mm-hmm. um, it could it could work for you in the long run. So Absolutely. those are the things that I think schools need to look into. Don't don't just give it to those people because you think that they're going to be better off in 10 years with a job or out in the, the real world. Give it to everyone. Well, yeah. Anyway, that's that's the, <laughs> that's, that's the way the system is set up. The, the system is set up to continue to segregate and, and and to make, you know, make this society where there's different classes of people. Like there's smart and then there's like in school, like there's it's set up to like segregate and make you think like these are smart ones. We need to continue to further progress them. These are the ones that are not as smart as these. So let's put all of them together and give them a, additional help. But you're not you're not really doing that. Like why aren't you you should continue to mingle if 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 they are grasping or if they are uh, able to learn in this, you know, uh, single way of learning, this this generalization way of teaching, right? Then those are the ones that you can continue to mingle, and mm-hmm. they're able to help out these other students. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to because everybody doesn't learn the same way. Everybody doesn't isn't this receptive in the same way of way. But for you to group everybody who's not getting it together, how is that helping each other? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How is that helping if everybody has difficulty in learning in this generalization way that you teach across America? Yeah, it's a lot of questions that need to be asked uh, of how you're going to populate your classrooms. And you can't just put the high test takers in one setting mm-hmm. and leave them here because just because you're a great test taker does does not mean you're an honorable student that just means that you take tests well absolutely I, I did not I would I have never been a, a a good test taker at all but can you can you put me in a room with a computer and can I figure things out yes Am I better with pictures rather than reading? Yes. That doesn't mean that I'm less smarter. It just means that that's the way that I think my mind works this way Mm -hmm. to process what's going on. But I feel like our education system sets it up to have a one track mind where if you don't do it this way, then you're not smart enough. We're not going to invest in you. We're gonna pick you over here and hope that you make it through the twelfth grade. I mean, that's that's how the system was set up. If you if doing a little bit of research, uh, research, that's how the system was set up. The school is is a it's not a pipe it's not a pipeline for prison. It's a pipeline for employer employees. Yes, you know it is it's 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 set up to spit out all these employees. So that way, when they leave the education system, they're mm-hmm. already trained to go into the workforce right because that's how that's how the system was set up long time ago and all these titans of who built america all your rockefellers your carnegie your ford your jp morgan all those so-called titans that built america all came together and had their fingers in the how 
the education system was set up. Because mm-hmm. at one point, the ed- education system didn't go. It, it was, it was, it was voluntary. Yes. And and only certain people was able to be educated. Mm-hmm. Right. And yes. then so, but anyway, like, it's it was that's how it was set up. And then it was like, hey, we need to continue to we 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 need employees to keep this going. So you need to change up the system. And then look, I mean, look how you spend 12 years in school. And then what's what's your typical day when you go to school? You're in there from eight o'clock, what, somewhere in, in between seven to eight o'clock in the morning, and you don't leave until three, four o'clock in the evening. Right? Yeah. You get a 30 minute lunch. Where else do you get 30 minute lunch? At work. Right? <laughs> what else do you get? You get what, like two 15 minute breaks during the day? Yeah. You know how much, how much time you get? To go from one class to the next class in high school and junior high. It, like, it is equal. Like five minutes. Yeah. Right. And then you got like what seven periods or something like that? Seven, eight periods. You know yeah. what I mean? Seven times five is like what 20, 25 minutes? Mm-hmm. 35 Which minutes. That equals that 30 minutes that we have for the extra break. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And then you gotta you then you're conditioned to go sit in this classroom and then you can't go anywhere unless you unless you get permission. Right. So when you go to work, what do you do? You go sit in your cubicle or your office or you go sit in your factory. And it's like, well, I'm here. I got to stay here because I got to earn this check. Because if I because if I leave, I won't get my check. And then I got to I got to let somebody know, like, hey, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. You know, watch my station or whatever. Or, you know what I mean? It's like. It's a. It's an unbroke system. It is working just fine. I was intending. Yeah. you know what i mean but then you then you tackle on this you know let's segregate and let's put all the kids that can't learn like these kids over mm-hmm. here and put them all together so that way they can't help each other because they all have you know so quote unquote uh ability not to learn in this way and then you put all your honor kids and all your honor students together and they continue to talk and and foster and come up with ideas and stuff like that while you're like hey you need to pay attention because you're not getting it Yes. Mm-hmm. So you need to cut out all that talking, and you need to you need to be in this book. So, but you know they don't get that same treatment. It's like, hey, y'all you know they come up with ideas, or they they're discussing things, or they're talking, they're networking, or they're, you know, and, you know it's it's, it's not fair, and it, it's it's it's, it's, fair. it's it's crazy. I I should have been paying more attention to it years ago. And like I said, when, when my oldest went through, I, I started paying bits and pieces of attention to the different tactics that they would use. If you get in good with the proper teachers, they'll treat mm. you right. If you play sports, everything is good in the neighborhood. But when you, the moment that you stop or the moment that you go to a polytech and they see that they're, um, athletes are not going to the high school the regular high school then it starts being okay well let me let us do this or let us treat the kids a certain way you don't have a right to school choice you have to stay here in our school district and you know it's just like it's it's a cult to me that's what I looked at it as last week listening to all the different people around me it's just like are we are we going to allow the brand to be misled no your brand is broken it's broken at this point you have all races having issues like Mm -hmm. there are issues going on within your school district that needs to be fixed and if it's not going to be fixed then let us know so we can make a decision to pull our kids from out of the schools because Mm -hmm. at this point are any of our kids safe on a bad day not to be cussed out not to be mistreated, not to be mistreated by students or administration or staff. Because just because someone is having a bad day, like the video that you share with me of the teacher basically cussing out the kid and saying, hey, you know, I'm not here for you. I don't care nothing about you. And <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> you know, what what are you here for if you're not here to educate the kids? And I get that you want to make a living. But I think when we go through the process of of picking a career, Mm -hmm. I feel like you should be sure if you want to be an educator. 
Mm. Like, if you know that you don't like kids, then don't don't go into that field because it's, it's not going to work out for either one of you. Why make it hard for them if you really don't want to be there? Mm. It, or if you're there for the wrong reasons. Mm. Like, you you basically make it so bad for kids that are that are little kids that are trying to find their way through life trying to feel accepted and that's what I took from last week um you know we we tell our kids to dream big dream big be anything that you want to be and then you put them in a box Mm -hmm. they don't if they don't fit into your box you're ready to throw them in the trash like, like it's really trash. Like, oh, you don't fit in my box. The same thing with the little boy that we're going to talk about with the crown act. Oh, well, if you don't have short hair, you can't, you can't go here. We don't have any opportunities for you. Mm. And is that fair? No, it's not fair. No, it's not. Like how many opportunities have been uh, withheld due to someone not fitting this image that you think that they should be fitting right just because you think that you know everyone should look a certain type of way and it's just like you know you built this image of or you've adopted this image that's been you know set as the standard for so long you know like well this is the standard this is what everybody's supposed to look like or this is how you should look like this is what professional looks like yeah who's saying what's professional right because if i if I, if I build a corporation, right, and I hire anybody, anybody based on your talent and your skills only, right? As lo- and, you know, and you're and you're bringing me value to my court into my to my organization. Mm-hmm. That should all that's, that's the only thing that should be matter, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, of course, you know, there might be some biases of like, look, I need you to stay within these left and right limits. Mm-hmm. But still, you know what I mean? Like, let's 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 talk this, let's collaborate, let's talk. Let's figure out how we can, you know, work together. And so that way we're able to bring value to each other and make this happen, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's crazy. And then, you know, you alluded to the young gentleman that's trying to, uh, who who's an honor student at his school and he's trying to graduate, young Jacob Rush. And mm-hmm. they're saying that, you know, their school policy for graduation is that, all you know, they have to have tapered hair and they can't have dreadlocks or cornrows or twists or whatever when they, you know, when they walk across the stage. And it's like, so what what does that have to do with graduating? Yes. You know what I mean? If that's if that's a part of their culture and that's you know, that's what they want, that's what they they work towards. Cause he's been growing his uh I've read he's been growing his hair for like five years. Oh, has his he? locks. He's been growing his locks for five years, and that's a long time. A very long time. He, he he didn't put any incentives in there, similar to my brother, mm-hmm. um, who has locks, and it's something that, again, I did not really pay attention to like that. I dealt with it in the workplace, but mm-hmm. I, I I don't think my kids dealt with it with their braids. Um, I think that people, you know, generally ask why, why don't you wear your hair out like other people, mm-hmm. but that's not, we're, we're in a pattern of making sure that we have protective styles, meaning that you don't, uh, have to iron your hair every day because it brings hair damage and, you know, you, you wash it make sure your hair is washed and clean and things of that nature. Um, but if it's a if it's a public setting, I believe if it's not hurting anyone, if it's if it's clean hair, mm-hmm. then what's the problem? What what is it hurting you that they have locks in their hair or braids in their hair? What is it hurting you? Huh? But what then it it putting it in, putting people in a box. You you tell people to dream big. And then you say, but don't dream, don't dream so big or don't act on just your wants. Meaning if I want to have straight hair, I'll have straight hair. If I want to have corn rolls, then I can put them in my hair and be okay with it. But what you're telling the kids is they can't be themselves. Mm. 
they have to be like you or or that box that you have presented to everyone that is the the common look but Mm -hmm. why do we have to look like each other why can't we be ourselves (laughs) i don't i don't get it i don't get it either you know what i mean and we go for we go for the same thing in the military because like we all all you know all the males have to have you know uh cut hair and it can't be a certain length it can't go past a certain length and it's you know it has to be clean cut like i get the clean cut or whatever because it has sanitary reasons i get you know what i mean but outside of that like there's the only exceptions is if you know it's does to a particular religion and they Mm -hmm. allow accommodations for religion but it's like you know what what are we, I mean, what is the real issue? Like, what is the real problem that we can't answer? And then, depending on the texture of the hair, you know, some can get away with uh, hiding their hair length. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I went to a meeting one time and uh, this one individual, he had, uh, he had his hair, you know, he combed his hair over in a style and it was, and you could tell he had like a lot of, uh, hair gel in his hair but like it and it comes over to a stop but one morning uh they was talking he was talking and it was some him and another person was talking and he was saying uh, about his hair and he 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 undid the the comb over that he did and his oh. hair came all the way down to like almost his shoulder no but the, but the way but the way that he was able to comb it over and style it it was it looked like it was within our regulation of like hair length and it was i was just like yo that's that's crazy because you know i can't i have to i have to keep my hair a certain length and i have to keep yeah. it you know cut you know mm-hmm. what i mean and like he kept it cut but he's able to manipulate it because of how he's able to style it in that type of, because of the texture and the way his hair can be styled and it's yeah. interesting to me you know what i mean and it's just like what are we doing? And then, like for so long, you know, females had the hair to hair a certain way. Like you had, it always had to be, you know, uh, pinned up in a bun yeah. or whatever. And they couldn't have, they couldn't have locks. They couldn't have, uh, you know, dreadlocks or sister locks or, you know what I mean. They couldn't have uh, like afros. Couldn't could only be, you know, a certain, a certain length. length. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So it's like. You know what do you do with like the females are the uh, well uh, female hair standards are changing and they're you know they're becoming more accommodating but for the males we're still the same way yeah mm-hmm. you know um as far as like i i have went this color because if i would be in the workplace it wouldn't be probably acceptable for me Mm. Uh, to have this color in my hair I'm already looked at differently because I wear braids Mm -hmm. and on top of color but another race with red hair they probably wouldn't look at them that way I've seen it where someone has came in with blue hair or purple hair Mm -hmm. can't get away with that kind of stuff if I would walk in there with purple or pink hair it would be poo-poo like no that's not acceptable you know so um you know it, yeah, it's just, yes <laughs> it would be you know like getting the funny looks and I think some people get away with things that we haven't been able to get away with and I'm glad that the crown act has been presented because now we can't be discriminate or we shouldn't be discriminated against based on our texture or our length of hair or that we had braids Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's a great thing if I can do my job properly no matter what my hair looks like then I can do my job and it shouldn't matter if my hair is clean Mm -hmm. it shouldn't matter what it what it looks like to you all right so let's so let's break down let's let's talk about what the ground act actually is and then we can expound on it so the Crown Act, which uh, stands for Creating a Respectful and Open World for Natural Hair Act and, uh, of 2020. And this bill prohibits discrimination based on a person's hair texture or hairstyle if that style or texture is commonly associated with a particular race or national origin. 
Uh, specifically, the bill prohibits this type of discrimination against those participating in federally assisted programs, housing programs, public accommodations, and employment. A uh, person should not be deprived of equal rights under the law and should not be subjected to prohibited practices based on their hair texture or style. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really amazing. And it just passed, uh, it just passed the House. Yes, waiting and, on the Senate, right? Yes, it's waiting on the Senate. And 189 people said, nah. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. I think... <laughs> It, I think it needs to be still be pushed um, some way, somehow. If you can get the conversation started, it can be passed, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, so it's already, uh, so this is to get it federally passed uh, at a federal level. There, mm -hmm. uh, I think I read that there are 18 states, I think, that's already enacted it in their state. Okay. Yeah. I know California was one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely need to look it up and see if Delaware is one. Um, I, feel, I have heard. Yeah, you're big. The, the big uh, Democratic states, they've like California, New York, uh, and a few others, they've already passed it into uh, state law. Okay. Uh, I don't remember what the other states is. But anyway, but I didn't read where it said, uh, where it talks about at this at the school level. So mm -hmm. I don't know how that's going to affect, you know, discrimination in schools and this and school policies uh, or if, is it going to be enforced at that level? Public schools, uh, they can get away with it, I think. But for private schools, I think it's still going to be where you can't get away with certain hairstyles mm. i really do because again they want they want the prestigious students to have a look about them they want them to dress a certain way talk a mm. certain way look a certain way so um you know it, it just is what it's going to be until everybody's willing to do a drastic change and that means stop discriminating against others based on how they look mm -hmm. um I think that we all probably have experienced some type of discrimination for how we look, whether it is our hair, whether it's our skin color, whether it's being short, tall, it, it can be a many of things. So I just think that you can't judge a, uh, a book by its cover, mm. looking at them. I think you should get to know the person before you, you judge them. And if their character says, hey, they're a little, little shaky, then you can judge them. <laughs> but until then, I feel like you shouldn't judge them like what I experienced last week. Mm. Um, you know, you you thought that I was a bad one, but I didn't get up there and curse you out. Somebody else did. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I, I definitely think that we need to stop... Um, judging people by their looks because little did that administrator know I probably got the same degrees that you have mm. but you wouldn't you wouldn't think it because you thought I had these braids in my hair mm. or, or I'm black but am I going to put that out there to you to say hey I probably had the same degrees that you do but you're looking at me like we're not equal <laughs> so you know, I, I think that people need to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not it's not cool at all. And I do plan on if I ever see him again, um, saying that to him. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Judging me. Judgment, you yeah. yeah, yeah. uh mm. your bias, your biases are showing. You know, you you it's, it's, yeah. And it's interesting that you, you know, you were talking earlier and you were saying how, like, they weren't really listening to you, you know, like, you know, that's, a, that's another issue, like, listen to respond, you not you don't listen to understand. And, you know, and that's, that's, you know, that's where a big breakdown of communication is, is that you just, you're not listening to understand that person's point of view and to, 
you know, like, all right, let me get an understanding of where you're coming from. And that way we can have dialogue. Yes. You know, you're just, you're just waiting for that person to stop talking to you. You just interject your point that you feel it, it needs to be interjected without really paying attention to what that person is saying. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, I don't know, it's crazy. I don't know how it's, what's the fix? I don't know what the fix is. I don't know what the fix is either. I, I think that will it ever it, be fixed? Will it ever be fixed? Is is the real question. And if we're in 2022 from the, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, we're dealing with what our grandparents went through, and we're still dealing with modern day racism. Mm. I don't I don't think we're making the progress that we should make you know yeah and we need to you can't you can't stay silent or you can't you can't back down just because if you feel like if i say something it's not going to do anything anyway or you know if i say something it's going to be retaliation it's it's like if you do that it's going to continue to happen because if nobody says anything to me or just you know then what i'm doing is not wrong yes Mm-hmm. you know I think that's how they think yeah so it, it you know if go to the board of education meeting and speak your piece talk about your concerns you know what yeah. i mean you might get you might not get the re- the response that you wanted or you might not get you know the feedback that you was looking there or you was expecting to get but at least you spoke your piece mm-hmm. and, and it should be in public record that you you know what you said was uh said you know and it should have been you know like i think it would be recorded they should be recording the minutes of the the meeting so yeah uh you know what i mean it's you never know who else in that in that forum might be listening and agree with you mm-hmm. and you know what I mean? <laughs> um the funny thing i don't even know if i said to you um someone came up to me and, and they were whispering and they said i'm glad that you spoke up keep speaking up for your kids and they whisper, and I'm, and I'm just like, why are you whispering? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if you are in a setting where you're scared to be fired, then, or you're scared to speak up for what is right, mm-hmm. then you're going to whisper. You're going to, you're going to take notice to different things. And someone else called me and they said, you shouldn't care about anyone but your son. You shouldn't care about anybody else's kids. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, and I hate that. And you know, I heard that bef- that 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 narrative, that rhetoric before mm-hmm. when I had a conversation in my office years back when this uh, Kaepernick thing, when Kaepernick was kneeling and all that stuff, and we yeah. got it was like a real small, quick conversation. And it was like they came with that ridiculous response of like why is Kaepernick even uh even saying anything or protesting like he didn't he grew up in a well-off family or neighborhood and he didn't I was like what's that got to do with anything yeah what does that have to do with anything man it 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 throws me off the the rhetoric like you said like do you not understand the overall uh analogy of the world if we all can work together and we can all be peaceful with one another, we can all be kinder to one another, love one another. Our world is, is great. But the moment that all hell breaks loose because racism is, is inserted into our day, mm-hmm. then everybody's world changes, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and from what we have experienced the last, what, three years? two two and a half three years i think that we all need to get better as working with one another um you know i said before on this podcast my grandmother has a whole side of um white family that we've never met according mm. to industry.com never tons of people slave mm. owners and everything and you will be surprised who you're related to if you go look on ancestry.com and and i and it needs to change the way that you treat people 
like different races. I've never had an issue with talking to my counterparts in other countries. I treat them just like they're here. Mm-hmm. You know, with the same rights. I was just having that conversation today. You know, people think that if they work in another country, you have to treat them like they're slaves. No. <laughs> they they like they have a life to live just like that we do. And I feel like don't don't exhaust them with mm-hmm. work. And, and make them work overtime, they have a life just like we have a life. Absolutely. But to me, I, I just feel like everybody should be treated equal. And I'm, I'm not ever going to get away from that. You know, I just want the kids to start to be treated equal um, in the classrooms and the schools because they didn't ask to be here. It was up to us parents to, to create them and insert them into this school system thinking that it was best for them. If we would have known that the school system was not the best place for them, we probably would homeschool their entire lives. Yep. Mm. See, that brings up that uh that brings up the one video I sent you when it was talking about how the Rockefellers uh mm-hmm. funded the women's liberation. And they were saying how like uh why you think that we would fund the, the women's liberation back in the like um it was like 50s and 60s you know what i mean it was like oh so women can have you know right to work and equal pay and he was like no mm-hmm. no we that's 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 not why we funded the women's liberation and you know help move it forward it was like we couldn't have we couldn't tax half the population and i was like get it women aren't working you can't tax women because they're not working mm-hmm. i said you know what i mean so if they enter the workforce now you're able to tax everybody that's working everybody everybody and then it was like you get this you get the kids in school at an earlier age so now you got pre-k you got kindergarten you know you got daycare hit them mothers at work you know mothers are working so they can't you know they're not home with their kids so now they have now they have a different parental uh, authority. Yeah. You know, at the daycare, at pre-K, at kindergarten, you know, now that now the system is working on the kids at a young at a at an earlier age, you know, two, three, four years old. You know, and it it's and, and I'm up for that box to be placed it. in and to to not grow at their own pace. That's what I think. For us, you know, it was really alarming to me when we talked on our podcast back in January with Jay. And she said, you know, I wanted to go to an HBCU because they were controlling me in the middle school and high school. Mm-hmm. You go to an HBCU, you have freedom to be you. But if you go to a PWI, you're still partially in that box, mm-hmm. meaning you, you have to go with their protocol and with hbcus on the other hand you can you can be okay with being in your skin is what i should say Mm. um but i i just don't think that like i said had i known um that it was going to be like this i probably would have took the initiative to homeschool um my son this year Mm. Even though I'm not the best mathematician, um, <laughs> hey, you're going to have to learn. I- I'll give you the tools that you need out of life. The Get basic- on that YouTube. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Khan Academy, all of that good stuff. So, um, you know, it- it's just things to think about. Yes, you want your kids to have social skills with going to school. But at the same time, do you want to put them, place them in harm's way? Mm-hmm. To be placed in their box and their way of thinking and their social skills because it's out of whack right now. I say shut down all of the schools. If they can't act right, send them right back home until they get right. And if they can't, if they can't behave properly, keep their behinds at home with their parents because mm-hmm. that's their problem. Why, why insert kids that are having behavioral problems like this one particular child that this month's issue, um, 
you know she has behavioral problems. You know she's kicking seats and, and slamming stuff on people's desks and cussing them out. What is she in the classroom for? And then you say, hey, she has a hard life to live. Shoot, we all got a hard life to live. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> but again, if you if you need assistance in the classroom, I think that some of our teachers are not equipped either to deal with different kind of kids. Mm-hmm. So they're just thinking, oh, you know, so and so there, nothing's wrong with them. No, they're they got some issues. That, that needs to be worked out. And, and you're going to mess up other kids in the process if you don't get this one child out of the classroom and get her under control. If she needs some medication, hey, y'all got to get a psychologist, a psychiatrist here, and she needs to be on something. But I, I, I'm just saying, she's she <laughs> consistent. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, our assistance would be the belts. You know, for us, you behave off the charts. This is what you was getting, but we got away from that. And I'm glad that we did. But at the same time, we still have kids that are a disruption in the classroom. And I get the educators that are frustrated and overwhelmed with the kids that are misbehaving in the class. Mm-hmm. Because it's it's not cute or funny when I see videos of chairs being thrown across the classroom and the the teacher's head is busted open you know Mm. it's it's just like man what is going on but what what's the corrective measure that we're going to take to fix the issues i don't know i don't know you (laughs) i don't know you i think it's Mm -hmm. There's, there's a, I don't know. I think there's, it's going to take the conversation. It's going to take getting out of your comfort zone. It's going to take uh, actually listening to something that's outside of what you've always known. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And But that's, that takes, that takes years and it takes, uh, a lot of conversation. It takes a lot of action. It takes a lot of forefront to, you know, make that type of progress because you need, you, you need the masses to get behind it. You know, yeah, yeah it's, you know, like I, I, I said it before, I think that, you know, there should be more internships in school and it needs to start at an earlier, earlier grade, you know, you need to stop. Uh, I mean, like, how much how much English do you need to take? I need that. I need twelve years of English, and you're not teaching me English. You're not we, teaching me the language of English. Listen, we had twelve years of English, and some of us cannot even spell right. So, what was the point? You know, I, so, like, like, what is the emphasis on so much math if we don't use it every day or English? I get social studies because I love social studies. Science, uh. <laughs> okay. yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's like, what do you do? I mean, it takes, it, like I said, it's internship. You should, it, that should be, it's the interaction with other people, and it, it's it gets the the thought process going, and it gets yeah. you to thinking about other things, and that's and talking, like going out and seeing where there's a lack, and like, okay, how can I? How can I, what can I, what can I produce or what can I create? What can I make in order to fill that lack? The, the, you know, there are, you know, what, there's a gap in there. How can I fill that gap to make, you know, to make uh, society better, to make progress better? Yes. You know what I mean? Like, but you can't do that if you're sitting in the box no. for eight hours a day and you taking, you taking six, seven, eight courses you know what i mean i'm going from one course to the next course to the next course Mm, mm, mm. you know what i mean it's i don't know i think you know also a more diverse set of teachers when we came through we didn't have a balanced set of teachers teacher ratio where my son is at it's not balanced 
you know, you you probably may never have a black teacher. And if mm-hmm. you do you have one or two, who are our kids going to re- relate to? They can't even, they don't even have anyone to talk to, a familiar face in front of them, whether it's Japanese, Chinese, black, um Hispanic. Yes, Hispanic. You don't mm-hmm. see a lot of Hispanics either. Hispanic teachers. But do you see a lot of Hispanic students? Yes. Who are they going to relate to? You know, things like that. And, and, and are they even willing to listen to that? Because if they were willing to listen, they will be pushing more initiative to get a more diverse group of teachers within these school districts. I'm not saying that all of them are like that, but some of them have always been like that. What I what I am noticing now, <laughs> it's no changes being made mm-hmm. all the way up to the top. Mm. So, you know, like, what are we doing here? And, and when I say that, I'm not saying that from a place of um, downing anyone. I'm just, it's a valid question. Like, who's speaking up for Hispanics the the diverse group mm-hmm. and if we can't have that conversation then something is wrong that's how i think mm. more diverse teaching staff or a proper teacher to student ratio mm-hmm. you know you, you stuffing more kids in the classroom but you're not getting more teachers and more staff no and i love watching cnn today with the supreme court nominee that's going to be the first black our first black female supreme Mm -hmm. court justice and i love the fact that our kids can see someone look like us that has reached that level of success to Mm -hmm. even be a nominee to even be put in to a group that you know is going to make change and it's needed Mm -hmm. it is needed i think that a lot of change has been needed for a long time we have the vice president we have always questions question if hbcus were good enough universities if they would uh catapult us into the best career that we can have for ourselves. And I think right now, especially for black women, man, we we are on fire right now. And it is, it's it's a great thing to see because when for me, when I'm in a corporate world and I don't see many people like me, mm-hmm. I'm in a in a career field that is white male driven. And you you got to have thick skin because they will rip you up and down, especially if, if they think you're not smarter than them or just being you, period. So, or, or confident or, you know, able to articulate. Yes. When something's wrong or something isn't right, you're like, no, that's not right. Mm-hmm. This is why it's not right. And, and hey, I had to learn it. Like, and, it's a lot of crying that went on, like <laughs> crying in a corner, you know, like, <laughs> and, and I'm just being truthful, but it, it teaches you about life. And I just told um, someone last week, I said, listen, everything that I went through has taught me when to speak up, but knowing when I should be quiet as well, meaning that I'll let you have your say for a little bit. Go ahead, do whatever you want to do. Cause I already know it's gonna be a train wreck. And you'll come back to me and we'll figure all this stuff out. <laughs> I've done that so many times. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead and do it. <laughs> oh, oh. What, what you need? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's a uh growing lesson mm-hmm. from coming out of high school into 
adulthood and, and you having to be a great example for people underneath of you or your own children, you know? Um, I think that having girls at this age, meaning looking at CNN today, it's a great thing for our girls, all, all races. You can do whatever that you like to do. You want to be the president? Girl, go ahead. Aspire to be the president and, and be great at whatever you do. And don't let anyone stop you from doing anything or talk you out of it. Mm. You know? So I was happy today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. All right. All right, good episode. Yeah. So uh just to just to bring it back, I just want to talk about Jacob Rush one more time. Uh if you have Instagram, uh please look up uh at Latrenda. I am Latrenda. That's uh Jacob Rush's mother. She has an Instagram page and she has a change.org uh link in her bio. Uh, if you want to sign a petition, please go to her page, click on that link in the bio, it'll take you to change.org. There's a change petition to uh for to allow Jacob uh to walk for his graduation. Uh right now they have uh almost 90,000 signatures and they're looking to get 150,000. Uh, this has picked up uh, a lot of steam in the past few days. Uh, I came across it uh, because of uh, I am Tabitha Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, she posted it on her Instagram page, and that's how I found out about it. And I read into the story, and it's it's interesting. It's it's crazy. It's it's you know that uh, yeah that we have to go for this. And yes. I, I want to say this while you are on that. I'm I'm grateful for the um, entertainers that are willing to speak up and just click share because it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. um, if if people more celebrities could get on it, um, I have ran into the issue where they're not they're not accepting messages from everyone. So even if you share it with them, they're not going to read it. Um, I just know that from experience the last couple of months, but the people that are willing to share it, I definitely thank them for everything that they do, um, because it opens the door for opportunities like that family mm. where it picks up steam and, uh, traction is what I should say to get more signatures put into place. It brings awareness to what is going on other than memes and everything else mm. that we will jump to share a meme before we jump to share awareness to major issues that are going on. And mm -hmm. I feel like just for, for that family, that is a major issue that goes on a lot more, like you said, than we, we identify. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think I saw last week a woman didn't get valedictorian because of her hair or skin race it was something like that i saw it but i didn't i didn't save it but i did see it and i i need to go back and look for it again hmm. but i think that we need to bring awareness to anything that is going on that's wrong in our community we should be willing and we have platforms we should definitely be willing similar to tabitha and similar to just because podcast where we wouldn't even question, hey, are we going to share it or not share it? No, we're going to share it because mm -hmm. we need to discuss. Look at this word out. Let's get this, get this information out. And that, you know, even though to, you know, to everybody who we can, we can get this out to and pass it on because that's how you get the masses on. That's how you get the masses aware of what's going on. And that's how, that's how you're allowed to affect change. Mm -hmm. You know, that you, you're allowed to affect change when you pass this information on. And you like, hey, did you, did you know about this going on? Did you did you yeah. hear about this? You know what I mean? Just like, you know, some years back, the the young uh, high school wrestler, you know, the referee at his wrestling match said that he couldn't have his locks, you know, during the wrestling match. And like right there on the spot, he had, you know, he had to make a decision 
and they cut his locks off. And he been, won the match and came off crying because he just cut off a part of his, you know, his culture. He, put, he, he had to cut off, you know, something that he worked on and that he believed in and that's something that he wanted. And, you know, in, in a matter of like five minutes, it was gone. Mm-hmm. Just because someone said, no, you can't have that. Or you're not going to be able to compete or you're not going to get hired or you're not going to do whatever. Because of X, Y, and Z. Biases or, mm-hmm. you know, adopting or carrying on old traditional thinking that didn't make it right then. Yes. Just because it happened way back when does not mean that you have to carry on the torch of wrong. Mm-hmm. It means that, you know, you should, as time goes on, you should be more open to changing the narrative, especially for our youth. Um, you know, their hearts are different. Mm-hmm. When we grew up and when our um, grandparents grew up, you know, I, I think that they're more loving. Um, and I think that's a good thing. So. Agree. I just want to, like I said, bring awareness to, to everything that is going on if I can and, and don't have to have any attachment to it mm-hmm. um, personally. You know, if it's wrong, hey, I'm I'm on it. I'm on it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. If you feel differently, come. Let's have a conversation. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Let's have a let's have a mature, articulate dialogue. Let's talk about it and just come to an understanding. And I mean, if we at the end of the day we agree to disagree, then cool. cool. Then we can move on. We can continue to collaborate and continue to work on everything. Mm-hmm. But at least we we at a minimum, I hope that we come to an understanding of where each other came from. And I'm like, all right, I can see where you're coming from. I still don't agree, but mm-hmm. we're cool. Yes. You know, the conversation needs to be had. A, a lot of conversations need to be had. And I don't, like you said, I don't think you can come in with uh, a negative uh, attitude. Mm-hmm. You have to put it all on the table. And, and, you know, hopefully when you talk about it, it will give you a different perspective to how others think. And your, your way of thinking is not always right. So... <laughs> don't we now <laughs> yeah but you know as, as soon as you as soon as as soon as you're challenged in some, something that you know to always be right or you think is a fact as soon as it's challenged you know that just you know you're it it it's, it comes like an attack and i you know it's like i you know sometimes i'd be like all right well hold on let me stop well let me let me hear let me let's let's talk about this yeah. You know, because maybe, you know, it could be wrong or maybe I am right and you've been wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, so let's let's talk about it. That's all it is. Conversation, mature, mm-hmm. articulate conversation about the topic or the situation or whatever. And I think it all, you know, would be better. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you you um, brief me. Hey, you can you can properly articulate without <laughs> and how I'm learning it. You know, because this thing can go left real quick, you know? (laughs) So, you know, I I think I did a pretty good job last week. Someone even told me I was too nice, you know? (laughs) No, we're not doing that. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, man, all right. Yeah. Uh, Final comments, final thoughts? Um, Definitely talk to your kids and ask them how they are experiencing school. Um, And if something is wrong, don't be afraid to speak up. Like they're your kids at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So they have hearts just like you do. Um, And I feel like that our kids should not have to go through early years of being heartbroken. Um, I never would wish this on anyone what I have been experiencing the last couple of months but Mm. it's all a part of the process and I will remain positive through everything some days I am crying in a corner and some days I'm like stone cold Steve Austin like (laughs) so um yeah it's it's you got to get some balance in between there so I'm always going to be 
the person that speaks up doesn't matter if it's it's my kid or someone else's like if someone comes to me and asks me for help i'm jumping on it and doing whatever that i can do to assist it doesn't matter if they are related to me or not I'm going to exhaust every effort to make sure our sister situations get taken care of. And um, yeah, that's why I am. I'm, I'm not afraid of the war at all. Um, and, and I'm going to do what is right if I don't do anything else. So, Absolutely. Yeah. You may lose a battle, but it doesn't mean you lost the war. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very important. Uh, all right. Uh, so that concludes our episode for this evening by yeah. all means uh if you listen to this on your favorite podcast platform please go rate please leave your comments leave you know leave a review uh we want that feedback we need that feedback we appreciate that feedback so please go you know like it give us some stars or if it's a one star cool tell me why you gave me one star why you gave us one star <laughs> you know so that way we're able to improve you know, if we get five stars, still leave a review and let us know, you know, what you would like us to continue to do. If there's topics that you would like us to talk about or bring awareness to, please, by all means, uh, if you, you know, afraid to talk in a certain platform, you can come on here and talk. Yes. Let us know. Hit us up and let us know if you want to talk or you want to have a conversation. You know, we can have a conversation. We can have a a articulate mature artic, uh, conversation about you know whatever the topic is that you you know feel passionate about uh you know uh and always if you you know watching this on facebook uh again leave comments leave uh like subscribe comment all that stuff uh if you're watching this on youtube uh same thing uh, by all means, please, if you see me or you see Molly around and you like, hey, I like the show. Cool. You know what I mean? I'm, eventually, I'm going to get a shirt that says Just Cause Podcast on it. You know what I mean? So uh, you're going up on a website uh, Friday. Yes. And, and you know I mean? Bruce will be getting his shirt <laughs> and updated uh, sweatshirt soon. We get ready to go in the summer. <laughs> So. <laughs> by all means and if you would like your uh if you would like a podcast merch uh go to the link in our instagram bio uh or you can go to india's creation.com yes yeah and you can pick up uh some merch. Some, some some merch some you know what i mean uh maybe maybe you should put the link in the on the facebook page too yeah yeah you know if you want to support mm-hmm. We, we appreciate all of the support absolutely uh we love all of that and we love y'all listening to us and you know just supporting us we so appreciate it so absolutely and also go check out uh india and jayla's podcast india and jayla's podcast yeah uh, also go check out thoughts of a blog, blog queen uh mm-hmm. podcast uh also check out clearing the air podcast a couple of good brothers over there they're you know talking about uh they talk about fathering they talk about uh leaving uh leaving air they talk about different topics but go check them out and then uh there's one more taylor's podcast yeah he was in shan's uh podcast session with me back in december that's uh, my podcast yes but man she's on it like she's talking about everything and i love i love to hear all of it yeah like she's uh i like i like checking out herself too she does she has some some good topics she has some good guests and they get deep into some conversations that i think is dope yeah so by all means please go check out these other podcasters is out here doing her thing mm-hmm. share love spread the love yes absolutely all right all right y'all have a good week absolutely oh and check come check out next week's podcast uh we're doing the uh credit basic uh presentation we're going over the basics basics of credit we're talking about credit card credit score credit reports credit bureaus 
uh what is credit but this credit what is the definition of credit all that good stuff uh it's a very basic uh presentation uh if you want to go over it with uh want your kids to listen to it your young adults to listen to it or you got some friends out here that's got some jacked up credit and you like look you at least get this part learn this part and then you know we can talk about you know fixing your credit so uh <laughs> so <laughs> So next week, next Tuesday, uh, we're, that's going to come out. Uh, so please, uh, if you want to know about credit, learn about credit, at least the basics. And if y'all like it and y'all think it, it brings some value to you, then uh, we can expound on it and we can do something more. You know what yeah. I mean? And also, uh, I think here in a couple weeks or so, uh, we're going to do an episode with uh, a couple of uh friends of mine, buddies that I know that are in the army, and we're going to talk about being uh, a black male in, in the army. Uh, yeah. I got a wealth of knowledge. I have a retired uh, chief warrant officer five who's going to come on the show, and I have a, a young captain uh, who's about three, four years in, uh, and he's currently, uh, he used to be, uh, uh, he used to work with me. Like, he came straight out of college, and he worked with me uh for about a couple of years as a fresh fresh yeah fresh lieutenant out of college and now he's uh he's at uh he's in boston getting his law degree and what? he's gonna yeah so he's getting his law degree and he's gonna come back into the uh after he's finished he comes back in the army he's gonna be an army lawyer what absolutely uh doing big things but uh yeah wow. so you know we're getting we're getting a, a wide spectrum of experience and uh knowledge on this one so uh, i think it's going to be good i think it's going to be beneficial and so be on the lookout for that mm -hmm. yeah yep and then we also got some other oh we got some, uh we got a couple other special guests that we're gonna have on the podcast too uh so we're starting to grow we're starting to get bigger we're starting to do things so i'm telling you you better go and get this merch now yes you know yeah. what i'm saying you know yesterday's price is not today's price <laughs> <laughs> all right we, we got it all right bye later <laughs> oh man